Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have the fifth problem from paper 2, 2022 on the physics section for the JE advanced test. And here we have something to do with Snell's law in the refraction of light. So it's a long problem and it almost takes three minutes to read the problem and kind of figure out what's going on before you can even start solving it and then all your time is gone. So this is one of those challenging problems because of that. It says consider a configuration of n identical units, each consisting of three layers. So here we have three layers, that's one unit, so you have n number of units like that. The first layer is a column of air of height one-third centimeters, and the second and third layers are of equal thickness of the square root of three minus one over two centimeters. And they have refractive indices, the square root of the three over two for the second layer, and the square root of three for the third layer. I would have preferred if they used N2 and N3, so N1, N2, N3 for the three different layers, but they didn't do that. So we renumbered them as N0, N1, and N2 to try and help that out. A light source is placed on top of the first unit right here. A ray of light from O is incident on the second layer of the first unit at the angle of 60 degrees. So here's the incident angle of 60 degrees relative to the normal. For a specific value of n, n being the number of units of three layers each, the ray of light emerges from the bottom of the configuration at a distance of L equals 8 over the square root of 3 centimeters. So at some point, by going through all the various layers, it will emerge this far away, square root, 8 over the square root of 3 centimeters, from the starting point. And the question is, how many layers are there? Or I should say, how many units of layers are there? Each of three layers, of course. So the idea is to quickly think, and I'm um, looking for a red pen, I'm holding it right here, is to realize that uh, the index of refraction of the second layer here, N1, is bigger than the index of refraction of air, so the column of air will bend towards the normal, like this. And then when it's in incident on the third layer here, again, the index of refraction is greater than this, so it will bend again towards the normal, like this. And then when it emerges back into this layer, which is then air again, it'll have, it'll have again the angle that it had over here. And then of course, relative to the vertical, this will be 60 degrees again, the whole process starts over. So what we need to do is we need to find these three distances, distance one, which is right here, from here to here. We need to find distance two, which is this distance right here. And then we need to find distance three, which is this distance here, add them together, and then see how many times or how many sets of layers do we need before we get this full distance over here. So that's the, the goal of what we're trying to do. So we need to find these three distances, distance one, distance two, distance three. So first we need a little bit of geometry. So we know what this layer thickness is. It's one third of a centimeter. So based upon the angle, and this being one-third, and of course this being d1, we could then say that the, uh, the tangent of theta, the tangent of 60 degrees, is equal to the opposite side. Hmm, the opposite side would be d1, divided by the adjacent side, which is one-third, like this. And then we could solve that for d1. We can then say that d1 is equal to, let's see, uh, that's three, that would be the tangent of 60 degrees divided by three. The tangent of 60 degrees is square root of three, so we end up with the square root of three over three for d1. Let's see here, the tangent, let me do that real quick. The tangent, just to make sure, the tangent of 60 degrees is equal to the sine of 60 divided by the cosine of 60, which is square root of three over two divided by one half, and sure enough, square root of three, just to make sure. Uh, so we know now what d1 is the square root of 3 over 3. So now we need to do the same for d, uh, d2 and d3, but before we do that, we need to find the angle of refraction right here. So let's call that theta 1. And so now we use Snell's law. We can say that n0 times the sine of 60 degrees is equal to n1 times the sine of theta 1. That would be the incident angle right there, which of course then would be the angle on the other side right here. There's also theta sub 1, so we need to know that angle. 
So that means that sine of theta 1, sine of theta 1 is equal to n0 over n1 times the sine of 60 degrees. n0, that's the index of fraction of error, which is 1. n1, that's equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. Ah, okay. For a moment there, I thought it's the same thing, but no, this two is not underneath the square root. But these cancel out, and so we end up with the square root of 2 over 2. And therefore, the sine of theta being the square root of 2 over 2, that means theta sub 1 must be 45 degrees. Theta sub 1 equals 45 degrees. All right, so now that we have this angle right here, now we can do the same thing for d2. So now we can say that uh, the tangent... The tangent of 45 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the opposite side here would be d2, and the adjacent side would be the thickness. And the thickness is right here. It gives us a thickness right here. So the tangent of 45 degrees is, I'll just write opposite side over adjacent side. And the opposite side is d2. And the adjacent side is the thickness of the layer, the second layer, which is square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. Square root of 3 minus 1 over 2, which is equal to 2 times d2 divided by the square root of 3 minus 1. The tangent of 45 degrees, that's equal to 1. So therefore, we know that d2 is therefore equal to the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. And so now we have d2. So we have d1 here. And we have d2 over here. Now we need to do the same thing again for d3. So d3 now, we need to find this angle, which is theta sub 2. And again, we use Snell's law. So we can say that n1 sine of 45 degrees is equal to n2 sine of theta sub 2. That's the angle we're looking for. So we know that the sine of theta sub 2 is equal to n1 over n2. Uh, times the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, n1 is the square root of 3 over 2. They're both underneath the radical. n2 is the square root of 3. The sine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2. Now, this will cancel with this. The square root of 2 over the square root of 2, that will cancel. So we end up at 1 over the square root of 2. which is equal to, ooh, oh, oh, no, no, these cancel out, it's 1 over 2, there we go, this is 1 over 2, this survives, these two cancel out, those two cancel out, it's 1 half, so if the sine of theta is equal to 1 half, well, that means that theta sub 2 must equal to 30 degrees, there we go, so now we have the second angle, so that's this angle right over here, so now we can determine d3. So we use the tangent again. So the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite would be d3, and the adjacent would be the thickness of that layer. And notice they were both the same thickness, layer 2 and layer 3. So that would be, again, the um, square root of 3. It's what's right here, the square root. Oh, oh where am I? Where am I? That's kind of interesting. That ended up, oh, because we had the tangent of, wait a minute, wait a minute. The tangent of 45 degrees is one. So this is over there. Yep, that's correct. So it's, it's, I was just kind of taken aback, realizing that the D2 ends up being, of course, the thickness of that because the angle is 45 degrees. That makes sense. So for a moment there, I thought I might have done something wrong, but that is correct. So now we have this angle. And so the adjacent side is the thickness, which is the square root of 3 minus 1 divided by 2. And so therefore, d3 is equal to the tangent uh, 2 times, let's see, because uh, this is equal to 2 times d3 divided by the square root of 3 minus 1. Better to write it like that. So I have the tangent of 30 degrees multiplied times the square root of 3 minus 1 all divided by 2. Now, the tangent of 30 degrees, let me write that over here. So the tangent of 
30 degrees is equal to the tangent uh, the sine the sine of 30 divided by the cosine of 30 which is one half divided by the square root of 3 over 2 so that's equal to 1 over the square root of 3 all right so that goes here so this is equal to uh, the square root of 3 minus 1 over the square root of 3 times 2 or better yet we'll just write as 2 times the square root of 3 all right, so that is equal to d3. So let's go d3. And now we have the, two, the three distances. We have d1, we have d2, and we have d3. Now we have to add those. Now I'm running out of board space. I'm going to make some room here so we can add those three and see what that amounts to. So the thickness of one unit. So for one unit, making comprised of the three layers, Distance is equal to d1 plus d2 plus d3. And d1, did I erase d1? I think I erased d1. What was d1 again? Ah, let's see if I have some notes in here. I can figure out what d1 is. d1, d1, where did I go? Square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. Uh, square root of 3 over 3. If I remember right, okay, so that would be equal to the square root of 3 over 3 for d1. d2 is plus the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. And d3 would be plus the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2 times the square root of 3. So first we need the common denominator, which looks like it's 6 times the square root of 3. So then this would be 2 times the square root of the 3 times the square root of the 3 over, the common denominator would be 6 times the square root of the 3, plus, here we would have 3 times the square root of 3, so that would be 3 times 3 minus 3 times the square root of 3. And then here, this one would be 3, so then I end up with plus 3 times the square root of 3 minus 3 all over the common denominator. And then, since I need a little bit more space, you can see that this is... But anyway, let's try it. So this is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 9. These two cancel out. Minus 3 divided by 6 times the square root of 3. So this would be 15 minus 3, which is 12, divided by 6 times the square root of 3. And we see that the length is 8 over the square root of 3. So essentially this is 2 divided by the square root of 3. And therefore we conclude that n units of each of three layers times 2 over the square root of 3 because this is the thickness of the, just one unit. So we multiply times n units and that should equal the total distance traveled which is 8 over the square root of 3. And then when you look at this, you can tell that if n is 4, the left side equals the right side, so therefore n equals 4, and that is the ultimate answer we're looking for. n equals 4, which means you need 4 of these units, each of 3 layers, so that the light will travel a distance of 8 over the square root of 3 centimeters by the time it emerges after the fourth unit. And that is how that problem is done and obviously there's no way I think anyone in the world can do this in three minutes.